Hello, I'm Jane Hanlon, the Mortgage Club Manager for AdviseWise, and welcome to today's Ask Jane. Joining me today is Wes Regis, the Key Account Manager from Hodge. And the questions we have had put to us is, how does an interest-only mortgage, or a RIO as some people refer them, compare with a lifetime? So, Wes, what are the benefits of interest-only mortgages? Um, so the main benefit, the main reason why you would expect a client or an advisor to be looking at a RIO, uh, I suppose the first step is around the loan to value, uh, the LTV of the case. So I think that's probably the, when you're going through the process and you're filtering down, uh, that's probably one of the main drivers as to why you would potentially start looking at a RIO, a retirement interest only mortgage, rather than your more traditional equity release type solution. And the reason I say that is um, there's no age uh, dependent loan to value structure. It's just the same loan to value across the age spectrum on a Rio plan. Um, and to give you a bit of a flavor for the loan to values that are available, uh, the Hodge range uh, maxes out at 70% loan to value. So you, you can be 50 years old applying for a 70% uh, LTV, which you're obviously not going to find on a traditional roll up type plan. So that's probably one of the main drivers really, Jane, I'd say. Um, there's obviously a lot of other aspects uh, that, that come into it, but that, that's predominantly the first part of the conversation is around loan to value. Um, that's a really good point because a lot of the advisors coming into this market now um, forget that the lifetime mortgage is based on the age of the youngest and therefore the actual percentage borrowing is somewhat reduced um, from that 70% to more and anything below the 50% mark. Yes. Yeah. So um, how, how do you base it on affordability then? Because obviously it's, it's a mortgage now that we're talking, aren't we? So how do you assess it? So this is probably one of the main challenges uh, about the Rio proposition is it's, it's obviously a normal mortgage. It's as far as the uh, regulators concerned, as far as lenders concerned, it's a normal interest only mortgage. So the client does have to pay the interest every month for the entire life of the mortgage. And in theory, with a Rio plan, the client could have the mortgage for the rest of their life. So when you're underwriting it, you have to make sure that there, there is sufficient income for the rest of the client's life to service that interest. And you also have to take into account um, a, a couple of stresses along the lines of a first death stress. So if it's a joint application, you have to make sure that the survivor can afford the interest payments every month as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously on certain Rio plans, there'll also be a rate stress. So if interest rates do go up in the future, um, the client can still in theory afford the interest every month. So those, those stresses combined with the, the very nature of the fact that you have to check for affordability and look at the income can make qualifying for a, a Rio mortgage quite challenging for certain clients. Um, a general rule of thumb is on, on a, a capital raise, you're looking at around about four and a half times income as the maximum loan. Right. So if the client is looking at a loan facility far in excess of four and a half times income, it is going to be tricky on a Rio plan. And that's definitely the biggest challenge that advisors uh, would have come across when considering Rio's is the, the affordability assessments. So the affordability, do you still ask for bank statements then and obviously assess the affordability on the bank statements? Yeah, so the process is very much like a normal mortgage application. Right. We, we have to bottom out what income is there, but we also have to evidence that income as well. Um, and obviously, dependent on the nature of the income, that can sometimes dictate how easy it is to get the relevant paperwork together, etc. So your run-of-the-mill incomes, your pension incomes, even uh, earned income from employment or self-employed income, um, that's kind. That's usually quite easy. So bank statements, uh, SA302s, the most recent mortgage statements, we use all of that kind of stuff for evidence every day of the week. Um, where it can sometimes get a little bit more interesting is things like maintenance payments, because we can accept maintenance, uh, foster income, so there are some quirky income types that we can also consider for, for Rio plans, uh, but then we have to um, start looking at how we can evidence that as well. Uh, but yeah, bank statements, a lot of the time we'll be asking to see those, and that will also generally show things like the pension credits coming through as well. So we can use that for the evidence on the pension side of things too. 
So will you use um, other assets like rental income from other properties, commercial properties, vital lets? Yeah, we do at Hodge. I know uh, there are certain Rio lenders where the income they accept tends to be your vanilla type income um, streams. At Hodge, we have got a very broad range of income, probably the broadest out there at the moment in the Rio space. So we will accept rental income. That can be from commercial premises as well. In fact, there was a case this morning I was looking at where the client owned a couple of garages and they were getting right. rental income. Well, they weren't operating the business, but they owned the actual building. So they were getting the rental right. income from that business. So we could include that. Um, we were looking to include that commercial rental income at 75%. So obviously, in light of what's happened out there with COVID, things like that, um, we've had to assess a few of the uh, the affordability criteria parameters, but we're, we're taking that income at 75%. Um, so yet, yeah, you know, there are some quirky income types we can consider. So what are the actual advisors telling you about your Rio mortgages, the benefits or the features? Uh, from a benefits point of view, obviously the LTV, by far and away is the, the, the biggest uh, positive. Uh, but some of the other features and things that we have that have been quite useful uh, is the Hodge Early Repayment Promise. So this is, uh, equity release advisors will obviously know this as downsizing protection. We've kind of rebranded it a little bit uh, at Hodge. We've called it the Early Repayment Promise because it now applies to our Rio plans as well. And it might not be that the client is actually downsizing. It's just that they're selling the property and moving out. So if the um, if a Hodge Rio client sells the security property, vacates the property and pays us back, we'll remove all of the early repayment penalties. So from a, from a Hodge point of view, I think we've had a bit of uh, traffic coming our way because of the Hodge early repayment promise. You've also got um, the ability to overpay, similar to normal equity release plans, so it's up to 10% per annum. Um, and you've also got the early repayment penalty structure of a normal mortgage. So for instance, if you had a two year fixed rate Rio, there would be a two year early repayment penalty structure as well. So by year three, if the client was looking to clear the mortgage and they weren't downsizing, it would still be penalty free. Um, so I think, you know, to summarise, loan to value combined with flexibility around payments, combined with flexibility around early repayment penalties, combined with the odd little feature here and there, such as the early repayment promise, um, does make them maybe stand out a little bit better than they did a couple of years ago when they first uh, hit the market. So all of this recent innovation has just made them a little bit more of an attractive proposition. Well, that all sounds very good. What makes your retirement interest only mortgage different from the others in the market? Um, so from Hodge's point of view, our USP is loan to value. So up to 70%, uh, which is that little bit further compared to um, most of the market. Cost, uh, we, we fare well on the old sourcing systems. We rank relatively highly. In fact, there's been a rate drop today, uh, which will yeah. hopefully improve that even further. Um, so when it comes to the actual cost of the facility, we, we should look uh, good compared to our peers in the competition. Um, but the, the biggest USP that obviously no one else is offering at the moment is the, that early repayment promise. So going back to that situation where you can completely avoid the early repayment penalties in a, a scenario where you're selling the property. So no one else is doing that at the moment. Uh, so yeah, high LTV, decent rates and the Hodge early repayment promise. Yeah, because you've got quite a range, haven't you, within your retirement interest only. And as you have one where the youngest reaches 80, you can convert it to a roll up, am I right? Yeah, so the so that plan, it's not actually a Rio. Um, it's We call it the retirement mortgage, and it's been around for a long, long time now. Uh, so we've probably been um, the, the victim of... Uh, the way that the Rios have come out with the name retirement interest only, it's, it's suddenly got a little bit confusing. Mm, yeah. uh, so retirement interest only is your normal mainstream option. And then you've got retirement mortgage, which is Hodge's equity release option. So it's actually an interest only equity release plan. And the big difference with retirement mortgage when compared to the Rios is that you can actually uh, flick a little switch when the youngest borrower reaches age 80 you can flick a switch and you can actually roll up the interest on that product from age 80 so you pay the interest every month as normal as if it's a normal interest only mortgage when you first take it out when the youngest borrower reaches age 80 you can get in touch with Hodge 
and you can start rolling up that interest instead. And you haven't had to product switch, you haven't had to remortgage onto anything else. It's built into that contract from day one. Um, so we only have to assess the affordability up to that point. Right. And we can accept things like earned income and self-employed income up to age 80. So we've actually looked at cases where it's been underwritten on the basis of what the client is earning, but it's a lifetime term solution because we know that they have the ability to roll up when they, when they stop earning the earned income. Uh, so where Rio would fail the affordability assessment in theory, because there's no income post age 80, um, a retirement mortgage would still work because we're only underwriting up to age 80, if that makes sense. Yep, makes sense. Yep, that's good. That's obviously a good feature. So what do you see as the downsizing to the sort of retirement interest only mortgages? Um, so downsides, I suppose it's easier to frame the downsides of Rio's um, or the challenges of Rio's when you compare them with the lifetime mortgages that are currently available in the market. Um, so although Rio is offering very high LTVs from, from a rate point of view, uh, I mean, the Hodge range starts at 2.85%, but that's on a two year discounted rate. And then in two years time, you're, you're obviously going to be looking at rates again. Whereas in lifetime mortgage world, you can look at a very similar rate nowadays fixed for life. Um, and you, you don't have to worry about any potential rate rises in the future. So I think um, one of the challenges with Rio at the moment is around cost and how it compares to the lifetime mortgages that, that are out there. The most popular uh, Rio products that we have at Hodge at the moment is our five year fixed rate. And that's actually 3.3%. So uh, as you know, Jane, you know, you mm. can, you can get products now in the, the lifetime uh, market, you know, in the, the high two. So you're looking at around about 50 basis points cheaper uh, on an equity release plan potentially. So that's where the LTV comes back into it. If the LTV works yeah. on a lifetime mortgage, um, then obviously that would be a, a good place to start your research really. So that's good. Also, I mean, with the lifetime, isn't it, you may get hit with redemption penalties based on the guilt as well, should you wish to exit the plan. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that. that's definitely one of the uh, areas that RIA has in its favour is that more mortgage like fixed early repayment penalty structure, uh, very short term when compared to the equity release plans, even the plans that have got fixed DRCs. Uh, but there's definitely no swap rate linked or guilt linked uh, penalties to worry about on RIOs. Uh, but I think whilst um, you do have equity release lenders out there looking at fixed ERC plans, with very low lifetime fixed rates um, that is going to make the low LTV cases very tricky for, for Rio lenders because you know your holistic advisor will obviously be looking at um, the lifetime options as well and you're potentially not going to compete it's really those mid to high LTVs where the the equity release lender can't really offer a solution that's that's the little niche at the moment where Rio mm. really works um, Hopefully, uh, as the products develop, as you know, there's more innovation in the Rio space, um, those rates will start to come down a bit more and be more in line with what we find in lifetime mortgage world. Uh, but at the moment, there is this, uh, relatively speaking, quite big gap at the low LTV end of the spectrum. So, do you find the, or think that the market will grow in the Rio sector? Uh, I do. Uh, for two reasons. One, I think demand is going to grow anyway. So I think just from a, a volume point of view, there's going to be more people in this age group over the age of 50, who for a variety of re reasons are looking to um, use a mortgage on their residence. So that could be remortgaging an interest only mortgage um, from you know, the, the, 90s, the 80s, the 90s, the noughties. Um, it could be helping out the kids, banker mum and dad, helping with deposits, especially with, with what's happened over recent months and the higher LTV deals for first time buyers disappearing a little bit. Uh, so I think mum and dad are going to come in more and more. So I think that will naturally drive interest in retirement interest only mortgages anyway. Um, but as well as the organic market growth, I think there's an awful lot more mileage to be had in innovation 
in the Rio space in terms of how they're assessed from an affordability point of view. So I think if we can, if we can do some work around the affordability side of the equation and really truly looking at the ability of clients to service the interests, um, being as flexible as possible, taking as many income streams as possible, using a real common sense approach to affordability. If we can continue improving that side of it as well, that will also help grow the Rio um, market. But at the moment, compared to your equity release market and compared to your mainstream over 50 mortgage market, it's still small. Um, so when Rio doesn't work, there is normally another option in either of those two camps. Uh, but I think as time goes by, Rio will be taking a bigger and bigger slice of the pie as it develops and as, as innovation continues to make it better for clients. Thank you. Well, we're f certainly finding that we're getting more um, mortgage advisors joining the club and the platform um, where they have got a, a very much a mortgage background that are now moving to, into the Rio and obviously into the lifetime. Um, and their fact finds are built for a full um, advice process covering all angles. Um, and they do obviously have to justify to their compliance departments um, the route that they're going to take and why. So um, they do assess on affordability as well, which is good to see and hear. Yeah. Um, so I think, judging from what you said, and thank you for your time, um, both have their place. Um, and I think we're going to see both of the um, demands for these sort of products grow slowly and significantly over the next few months and certainly into next year where I'm expecting it to be a lot, lot busier for us all as um, the situation unfolds with the old um, virus. So thank you very much indeed for your time, Wes, and for the information. It was very informative um, and I've learned something new today. So no problem at all, Jane. It's been thanks for be joining us. Um, so please keep your questions coming and um, you can use the platform or you can just give us a call. I hope you enjoyed using AdviseWise. Um, keep busy and thank you for your time.